Founded in 1961, Cerny Motor Sales is a leading provider of medium and heavy-duty trucks for various markets, including over-the-road, pickup and delivery, construction, utility, and government. As a multi-year winner of the prestigious Circle of Excellence Award from the International Truck and Engine Corporation, Cerny Motors is recognized as a dealership that consistently achieves the highest level of dealer performance. Whether you're looking to buy, lease, rent, purchase parts, or have your truck serviced, Cerny Motors is your one-stop shop for new and certified pre-owned trucks. We strive to be the best full-service international truck dealer in Northeastern Ohio. Cerny Motors is proud to be a supporter of the Youngstown Phantoms. And for our second segment of this week's episode, Inside the Glass, we are joined by Phantoms head coach Brad Patterson. Brad, how are you? Good, good, good. Thanks for having me. Uh, nice to see you. We haven't been gotten together for, you know, probably a little more than a month now. Yeah, you guys are busy. We are. I thought maybe there's better people to talk to. No, Sean's got papers. I got pool boy problems. There you and go. There you go. <laughs> well, Brad, let's uh, let's get your thoughts about the the three nothing win and then the five to one loss against Muskegon this past weekend. Um, you know those potential playoff games. Um, you know any any game at this time of the year is like that. Um, obviously, uh, happy to get that that three nothing win on, on Friday night. I think Ivan Kubelkov was great in the game. We had some uh, some timely scoring. Um, but really rolled four lines throughout that game, and everybody contributed in, in some sort of fashion. Uh, and then you fast forward to Saturday night. Uh, I think we had a slow start. Um, you know, I know we took Ivan out after after the third one against, but that was, you know, we've talked about it on the show before. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't fault Ivan on, on all three of those goals. Um, you probably, probably would like one back, but at the same time, we, we need a little bit of momentum swing, and um, I thought we started to generate that, and then uh, sure enough, there we, we have a turnover at the offensive blue line. It comes back, and you know, in the last minute, we, it makes it four nothing, and that's uh, extremely tough hole to, to dig out of. Uh, I did like our pushback in the second period. Um, you know, I, I thought the guys played with a little more emotion than what we had in the first, and you know, any time I think we talk about it all the time when you play against Muskegon, it's like that because of the rivalry, and um, you know, ultimately. Uh, disappointed in that in that loss on Saturday night but you know this time of the year you're, you're playing an important game every night and you know you you, you learn from it you get better from it and uh, you, you push on we have a huge weekend coming up this weekend uh, touching a little bit on this game on Saturday it, it turned to be out uh, turned out to be pretty physical uh, can you attribute this more to frustration or was it really just the culmination of everything from the past nine games against the Jacks this season yeah I think part of it you, you know you play a team nine times and Definitely, the the emotion builds, and the you know the f the frustration from the from the first period probably had a little bit to do with that. But um, you know, I thought, like I said, we, we played with much more emotion, and when you do that, you get a little more physically involved. And uh, I thought we we really generated some momentum from that. And uh, you know, I I wouldn't be shocked. You know, you play Muskegon down the line, they're they're always going to be playoff type atmosphere, playoff type games, and and that emotion is always going to be there. Uh, Ty Farmer was here for two and a half years, and this was his first trip back to Youngstown in a different jersey. That, that was a little weird for me. I don't know what it was like for you. Yeah, I, I, I tend not to to see individual players on the other team. Obviously, you know who to key in on and things like that. Um, but when somebody's been here for, for that period, you know, you, you happen to, s to notice them, I guess, on the ice. Um, by all accounts, I know that during the game, the guys aren't friendly with them uh, and, and vice versa, but... I know the guys had words with him before and after the game, and um, by all accounts, he, he's doing well there. So uh, we know that uh, Ruggsy was kind of tossed out of the game for instigating on Saturday. Have we heard any sort of reprimand for him this week? No, I, I don't think there will be anything. Um, you know, it was uh, he did get an instigator penalty and get thrown out of the game, but it wasn't, uh, you know, he didn't chase anybody down and, say, punch him in the face or, or anything like that. It was, uh, you know, kind of two willing combatants, if you will. Um, but... You know, Ruggsy uh, stepped up. Uh, there was a, a questionable hit in the in the neutral zone on on Austin Pooley, and and he was sticking up for his teammate. So we've got Green Bay coming up this weekend. What do you know about them? Well, they're they're a good club. Um, you know, they're they're high tempo, high high octane offense. They transition the puck really well. Uh, have some good goaltending, and you know, ultimately, I, I know you alluded to it. I've alluded to it. it at this time of the year, you want to play important games, and every one of these games is important. It's, you know, you you can look at it and say it's a regular season game, but from now on, 
you know, and even last weekend, those are those are playoff games. It doesn't matter who you're playing. It's um, and, and that's what you want. You, this time of the year, you want to play games that are important. Uh, if you've if you're playing important games, it means you've you know you didn't done well things or done things well over the course of the season. I expect our guys to to be amped up and ready to go. Probably for the last, I would say, eight weeks, your team has been playing with playoff like intensity. What have they been like in practice? Yeah, I mean, it's funny when the I, I always feel like it's like when the weather changes. You know, from that winter to starts to become a little bit like spring, or you see the sunshine. That to me, that's playoff weather. And you know, maybe, maybe it changed that that weather changed a little bit earlier this year. Um, but the the guys are energized. They come to the rink every day, and you know, you don't want to be anywhere else other than out on the ice. And the guys, you know, the, I'm sure if you ask them, they'd probably want to play six games in in seven nights, in opposed to having to wait until the weekend to play. Um, but obviously that's, uh, you need that rest and recuperation. Uh, so that's part of the week, but part of the week's getting better, uh, and, and preparing for your opponent and with Green Bay coming in, we've only seen them the one time there, like back at around Thanksgiving. I think it was the night before Thanksgiving. It was. Um, so we haven't seen them in a while and, you know, we've, we've done a lot of pre-scout on them and I know the guys are anxious to, to get after it. Well, unfortunately, I don't think Casey Middlestat's going to be joining Green Bay. So, sorry we're going to miss out on seeing him. From what I hear, he's quite the scorer. Yeah, he's an exceptional player. Um, definitely going to help him down the stretch. I believe his, his team in Minnesota is going to the state tournament. Um, but he's, uh, he's all that he's, he's pegged up to be. He'll be a, a high NHL pick here this year. So, Brad, you guys have been home for a month how does that help with the routine? And I, I've been here as long as you've been here. I don't remember the, the a month at home straight. Yeah, it's. I mean, that's pretty rare. Um, you know, I, I know the guys like like it in a sense that you know they're they're accustomed to their their beds, I guess, at home. You know, they're they're with a family and it's their family away from home. Um, all great spots and um, guys like playing in front of friends and family, and, and that's big. And love playing here at the Cavelli Center in front of our own fans. Um, so it's it's great to be here, and, and obviously you wanna you wanna play as many home games as you can. You know, you you push forward. You, you can say you have I forget what's on the docket here six six or seven here at home left um, in the regular season, but ultimately you want to play uh, you want to play right until that final series and, and get you know another another maybe ten games here at home. So um, you know the guys are pushing for that. They want to play here and they want to play important games. It, it really is an exciting time of year for everyone in, in the organization, from players all the way up to the front office staff. Uh, what is your favorite part of the push for the playoffs? For me, I look at it two ways. Uh, I look at looking back at the guys from the start of the year to now and how much they've developed and um, not only become better hockey players, but you know, matured off the ice as well. Uh, I think that's huge, and you always look at that as a coach. But um, as far as, you know, playoff season if you will uh, it's that intensity and that you know compete level whether it's in practice whether it's in game it's it you can just tell that there's like that buzz around the ice when you're out there um the guys always seem amped up ready to go whether it's in the locker room you know the getting fired up on a on a wednesday for a for a friday game it's it's unique um and people that are around the sport don't always get to see it but it's it's definitely something that really starts to ramp up here you know, Brad, we really try to build a family atmosphere here with the Phantoms. And a couple of weeks ago, we got to have the dads here at the games. What, what was that like for, for, the, for you to get to know some of the families a little better? What was that like for the boys? Well, I think that's, that's going to be a really special memory for the guys. It's, it's not every day that you, you get your, your father or your uncle or, or a family member to, to be able to sit in that locker room prior to a game and um, you know, kind of share through that. A lot of the the dads probably don't don't get to see that. I know some played at a, at a high level, so I've have seen that stuff before games. But you know, and we talked a lot about you know our our group and how tight we are, and you know a lot of that spans from the families that they've come from. Um, so to have them be a part of that, and you know the other thing we talked about let let's not make it a one time deal here. Let's let's make it so hey we we've, we've done it here during the regular season. Let's let's have it be a good memory, but let's push for, for a bigger and better memory where maybe they're in that locker room after our final game here in Youngstown and, and we have something to celebrate. All right. Well, Brad, thank you so much for joining us uh, on this week's episode of Inside the Glass, and we look forward to talking to you uh, Friday night after we beat Green Bay. All right. That sounds great.